I can remember when my dad said, <clears throat> I'll never live long enough to see the stock market hit 10,000. Can you imagine? And he did see it, by the way, but he was shocked that he said, I never thought I'd live long enough to see the stock market at 10,000. Well, here we are. And joining me now, Nick Hopwood, certified financial planner, founder at Peak Wealth. His team manages uh, almost half a billion dollars uh, for high net worth individuals, retirees, small business owners, and a whole host of others. And you can check out Nick's five-star Google reviews, by the way. More five-star reviews than any other advisor I can find. So there you have it. Nick Hopwood, he should have, you know, like a people, bunch of people applauding coming in. There he is, Nick Hopwood, everybody. Nick, how Thank are you? Steve. you? Thank you. Doing well. Yeah, how are just you? Just take a bow. Right. Um, so... I'm looking at some things here. I'm confused. They're, they're building a, a new Dollar General store not too far from where I am. And I, I'm thinking, didn't I see Dollar General stock basically in the toilet recently? And, and yet I see this new store going up. I was kind of surprised. Um, but you said it's kind of a, a world of haves and have-nots. Ferrari's on the rise. Dollar General's getting pummeled. I'm not wrong about that, am I? No, you're absolutely right. And I, you know, they might stop construction halfway through. I wouldn't be surprised because... The stock is absolutely in the tank. Dollar Tree as well. It's it's basically the, the the policies coming out of COVID with the asset inflation. We've all seen the cost of goods going up, but our properties are up, our, our uh, portfolios are up. And if you are uh, a wealthy individual and you have all this asset inflation, what do you do? You might go out and buy a Ferrari so because you're in such great shape. The Ferrari stock is to the moon and the, the ordinary folks, Steve, they're, they're, they're struggling, and that's evident by the Dollar General stock. And there you have it. There you can look right at it right there. For those of you on streaming and on television, you can see the separation. Ferrari's going up like a rocket, and, well, Dollar General's tanking. And why is that, Nick? I mean, here, like five years ago, four or five years ago, I saw uh, Dollar General and Dollar Tree and all those. Those stocks were really rocking. And now here we are. What happened? Well, we tend to think of those types of companies as recession proof because, you know, they're they're catering towards those dollar products. And it is a little bit of a mystery where if if the consumer is struggling, why wouldn't people move from Walmart or from Target to Dollar General? But they're but even Dollar General is struggling in this environment. So I think it tells you that there's an underlying theme of of the, the lower income folks in real trouble. Yeah. And, and so, OK, let's go from that to this this ridiculous set of proposals from Kamala Harris. All right. So let's go to the next chart here, guys, because the, the, she says that we should put a tax rate on capital gains of what is it? Forty four point six percent regular capital gains. But then it's this unrealized capital gains nonsense. Basically, if you invest, I'll just use Bitcoin as my example. You invest $1,000 in Bitcoin, it goes to $2,000. She wants you to pay tax on that $1,000 increase, even though you didn't sell your stock, whatever it might be in. And you pay 25% of that or $250 back to them. And then if the stock goes all the way back to 500, you just lose all the way around. It, it, it's, the most, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. But that's what she's proposing, isn't it? Yeah, the unrealized capital gains, in my opinion, as you mentioned, is a complete disaster. But that chart that you're looking at right now uh, shows the proposed long-term capital gains rate of 33%. This is the highest capital gains rate since Jimmy Carter, right? And so it would be a 40% increase from the levels that we're at right now on capital gains. So if you're, if you're talking about trying to incentivize small business and incentivize investment, this is exactly the opposite thing that you'd want to do. This is anti-growth. Well, right. But is, is this what you call an opportunity economy? Because, I, I, you know, she keeps using this term opportunity economy, Nick, and I laugh because I think Donald Trump gave us an opportunity economy, an opportunity to work, to make a good wage, to save money, to invest, to buy a home, to pursue the American dream. That's an opportunity economy. Donald Trump gave us that during his time in office. I've not seen that and nearly of millions of others during this time of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris in the White House. Where am I wrong? You're right. You know, furthermore, we can take it one more step and say, you know, the problem is not that we need to raise taxes and raise revenue for the government because tax receipts are at an all time high. The problem is the government spending. So we should be focused on like what Elon Musk is talking about and cutting out inefficiencies and less focus on raising taxes. Yeah. All right. So we know now that 
you know, they're going to tell us that inflation is down and everything's hunky-dory, but everybody goes to the, well, enough people go to the grocery store to know what the truth is. Enough people go to buy a, a, a set of tires to know what the truth is, or to buy anything to know what the truth is. So the Fed meeting's coming up, uh, what, next week? And, and then we're going to find out. They're going to cut rates. Okay, that's not a bad thing for us at this point, but what do you make of this and, and, and its impact on stocks, bonds, and our value? Sure. Well, yeah, we expect the meeting on the 18th with the Fed to cut a quarter percent. Some people are asking for a half percent, but I would guess a quarter is where they're going to go. And when we think about the, the stock market from the point of the first Fed rate cut and looking forward 12 months, we have a chart for this one as well. The average return over the next 12 months has been 13 percent per year, and it's been positive 85 percent of the time since 1929. So those numbers are, are pretty good, above average. But the last two times in 2001... Go ahead and put that, hold on. Go ahead and put that chart up so we can show it. It's for those people that are watching on television, we can see what that you know, impact is overall. We're looking, they'll get that for us pulled up here. Um, because here's what my concern is. We, we talked about this here on the phone the other day. Here's the chart. Um, is that we're going into a recession either way. I believe we are. No matter who gets elected, we're going into it just seems to me and I'm not an expert like you are, but it just seems to me that's where we're headed. So look, Steve, see the two negatives, 2001, 2007, those were recessionary periods. And you can see that the market, despite the rate cuts, the market was negative. Now, this is minus 13 and minus 17. But as you know, the drawdown what took two or three years in each of those periods. And so the market was down by 50% or more. Now, I don't see that happening this time, consulting my crystal ball, uh, but <laughs> it, is, it is nice to see when the Fed cuts, generally speaking in history, good things follow. And, and, and you had one more thing you want to share with us, one more chart, and, and I do want to show this because to me, this brings me back to what I heard on Tuesday night about opportunity economy and all this nonsense. Um, why haven't you done it was what Donald Trump asked. All right, we don't have that one. That's fine. But, okay, median checking and savings balances, uh, they're down. They're down since 2021 massively, Nick, which is not good news. we got about a minute here. Tell me about this. Right. So if you recall, in 2020 and 2021, everyone was receiving, you know, checks from the government from the COVID bailouts. And so yeah. everyone was putting those monies into their checking and savings accounts and slowly spending down. And at this point, the current median checking and savings balances are down 40 percent from they, where they were in tw at the height of 2021. So maybe this comes back to that dollar, dollar general theme where on average people have less money in savings. But this also could be why we have not seen a recession yet. On top of the massive government spending, we've had right. all this extra money in the bank that's been keeping us afloat. Here's my advice to you if you're listening right now and you're like, man, uh, I don't know what to do. Get a second opinion. Nick Hopwood will take your call. PeakWM.com. PeakWM.com. Or if you're on television right now, that QR code, snap it with your with your phone. Boom. Take you right to him. Nick Hopwood, always appreciate your input. PeakWM.com. Find out more. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, Steve. We'll be right back.